What is going on everybody? It is your Digital Disciple, Brian Cody, coming at you once again with another week of the Digital Disciple. Been on vacation, so I took a little time off, but we're coming back strong and we're going after the hard stuff. This is the third segment of the tough questions. This might be the toughest one of all because for some reason everybody wants to avoid it. Pastors won't talk about it. Churches won't talk about it. I guess I'll have to talk about it, but I'm not going to do it in the way you think. This is not a um, anti-anything message so just at the beginning I'm gonna put that right out there this is what the Bible says about this topic does God hate homosexuals and here is the answer no God hates sin and no real Christian who follows the Bible and goes to a Bible based church hates homosexuals we're not homophobic we're not afraid of homosexuals by any stretch any more than someone who doesn't believe in God isn't Godophobic. You see what I mean? You can disagree with somebody and not also be afraid of them, but also that doesn't mean that you hate them. Now, there are some people who hate Christians. I get it. And guess what else? There are some Christians who hate homosexuals. I'm not one of them, and most real Christians are not. So why does God why is God against homosexuality, the act? Because it's a sin. Not because Brian says it's a sin, because the Bible says it's a sin. Now, right there, somebody might be like, that's it, man, I'm done. If you want to get offended, go right ahead. That's not my point, what I'm trying to do, but I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. In Genesis 19, five through seven, everybody knows about this one, Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, homosexuality wasn't the only reason that God leveled that city, but sexual immorality, including homosexuality, was one of the reasons that city got leveled because they were sinning and they refused to stop sinning. God and Moses had an argument. And Moses said, if I can find at least all the way down to just 10 good people in the city, meaning... 10 people who were not sinning, then God would spare that city. But Moses couldn't find 10. <laughs> so the city got leveled because they wouldn't stop sinning. All sin is what God hates. My sin and your sin. In Leviticus 18, 22, it says that men who lie down with other men, it's an abomination to God. Leviticus is the book of the law. That's teaching the law. Now, I understand some of you might say, I don't like that. Well, let me explain to you something. When I first sat down in a church for the very first time, when God found me just wrapped up in my sin, I didn't like the fact that it, the Bible and the preacher was telling me I need to stop sleeping around. I need to stop doing drugs. I need to stop lying and cheating. It did not offend me. <laughs> it convicted me. Here's the difference. An offense is me saying what you're saying about me isn't true and it makes me mad. Being convicted is saying, man, that hits home because it is true. And I'm like, man, that is for real. And the reason why I feel bad about it is because I am doing those things. And even I know I need to stop. Some of you might right there say, I'm gay. I don't mind being gay. I'm not going to stop being gay. That is your choice. I cannot, as another human being, judge you or condemn you. God can and God will. He will judge you and me. You see, we have been divided by the world who keeps telling us that you can't associate with these people and you can't do this with these people on both sides. I have been yelled at, spit at, cussed at by homosexuals because I'm a Christian. And I understand there are Christians who yell at and spit at and cuss at homosexuals because they're homosexuals. They're not right on either side. I won't be that way. I know right now if God himself, if Jesus was walking this earth like he was, he would not be avoiding homosexuals. He'd be right in the middle of that whole entire community. But here's what he wouldn't be doing. He wouldn't be saying to them, your sin is okay. 
He never did that with anyone while he was here. He sat with prostitutes, with tax collectors, with adulterers, with all of these people who were sinning and said, you need to stop sinning. I love you. That's why I'm with you. And when the Pharisee said, why are you with those people who are sinners? He said, because I came as a physician to help the sick, not the self-righteous. And the self-righteous ones are the ones condemning homosexuals. I've had friends say to me, so when you have a church and you're a pastor of a church, you're going to let gay people come to your church? A hundred percent. Yes. All sinners are going to be allowed in my church or else the church will be empty. <laughs> Here's what I won't be doing. Those same people say, so you're going to tell them it's okay to be gay? No, I won't do that either. I'll tell them I love them and I love them as human beings and as people like me who are sinners like me. I'll tell them that, but I'm going to love on them. And if they say to me, well, I'm not going to stop being gay, so I guess I'm not coming back to your church, I'll say, come back every week. Come back every week. And people hear that and go, oh my God, dude, you're giving in. Mm -mm. You want to know why, Christians? Because I know the first time that I sat down in a church, when I was living in my sin, I didn't walk through the doors of those church, at that church and just stop sinning. That's not what happened. As a matter of fact, I was so proud of myself for going to church that I kept on sinning for a while. But eventually, because I stayed in the church and wasn't kicked out of the church for my sin, I learned and decided I want to please God more than I want to please my flesh. And so by not getting kicked out of the church, I got to be able to experience the love of the Lord. So I'm going to let them come back all the time. I'm going to encourage them to come back and I'm going to love on them every week like I would every other person in that church. That's how we break down the walls. We don't break down the walls by kicking these people to the curb. They're just sinners like us. Now, their sin isn't any worse than ours, but it also isn't any better. And that's what society has tried to explain. Oh no, that's a lifestyle. But anyway, here's my favorite one. Well, what do you say to people who were born that way? There's not a gay gene. I know that's going to make some people mad. Look it up yourself. Don't take my word for it. I've looked it up. They've tried to find it. They want to find it. There's no such thing. So when someone tells me, well, what about if I was born that way? I look that person in the eyes and I say this right here. Listen close. I was born a sinner too. See, I was born a sinner just like you were. Now your sin might be different than mine, but once again, it's not better. Mine's not better, neither is yours. I even was born with a sin of lust, which is what homosexuality truly is. It's a lustful sin, but my lust was different. And I fed that lust until God found me, until I had dug myself such a deep hole that he was the only one that could get me out. So I was born a sinner too. Now, if you go to a church that says to you, not only is it okay that you're gay, come in and walk through the door, but it's also okay that you keep living in that sin, get out of that church. That's not a Bible-based church. It's not. See, here's what a Bible-based church teaches all sinners. We don't change the Bible to fit your lifestyle. You need to learn to change your lifestyle to fit what the Bible says. That's what a good church teaches. And that's a church that I want to be in. Because if you're just shopping around for a church that's going to let you live in your sin, just stay home. There's no reason to go to a church. It might make you feel better for about an hour on Sunday, but if it's making you and continuing for you to live in that sin, it's doing more harm than good. So stay out of it. This is my last thing. When I was growing up, I was always told in, by the, you know, in the era that I grew up in, this was the cry of the homosexual community. Stop pushing your lifestyle on us. What I'm doing in this video by all means is not pushing my lifestyle on you. I'm telling you what the Bible says about homosexuality. If you choose, because we all get a choice, just like I could have chose to stay in my sin, if you choose to stay in your sin, God bless you. I don't hate you. I won't 
disavow you. I won't yell at you or scream at you or cuss at you. That is your choice. I'm not trying to push a lifestyle on you. And I would ask the same of all the homosexual community. Because right now, every TV show has to have a homosexual character in it. Almost every commercial I see has to have one. The books that they're trying to teach our kids in school. They've kicked God out of school and invited transvestites in. That's forcing your lifestyle onto people who do not want it. Secondly, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. If Christianity was pushed on society the same way that homosexuality is currently being forced onto society, the same people forcing homosexuality onto society would be in the streets waving their banners and their signs saying, stop pushing God on us, take God out of this, take God out of that, don't force God on us. You can't have it both ways, that's called hypocrisy. So live your life. I'll live mine. I will happily sit down with anybody who calls himself a homosexual and have a conversation about the way you live and about the way I live. I'll listen and hopefully you'll listen. If we both walk away from there unchanged, so be it. What I'm not going to do is yell and scream and cuss and that gets no one anywhere. I'm not going to assume anything about you. Don't assume anything about me. Let's talk about it. I've been talking about it in this video. The problem is we confuse feelings, which is fleshly, with who we are in our spirit, which is spiritual. If you want to get riled up and angry because what I'm saying in this video gets you mad, it riles up your flesh, maybe ask yourself, why does it bother you so bad? People can yell and scream at me for being a Christian. I feel more sorry for them and I actually pray for them more than I get mad at them. It's who I am. It's what I believe. And I'm just speaking because somebody has to do it. Somebody has to put that bridge between us. We don't and should not hate each other. We are human beings. We should love each other. God is love. God hates all sin. And all sinners who choose to live a lifestyle of sin, according to the Bible, are not getting into the kingdom of heaven. That's what the Bible says. It's not what Brian says. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. If I choose to live in my sin, I'm not getting in. Now, and this is what I'm finishing with. God is quite possibly the most compassionate being that has ever lived. Read the Bible and you'll find out what he put up with, with the Israelites, what he put up with, uh, with us as human beings, what he put up with, with humanity from the beginning until now. He's compassionate. So you can say, I'm going to live in this lifestyle. This is who I am. This I'm never going to change. Completely your choice. And I don't care about getting into the kingdom of heaven. Completely your choice. But I promise you this. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So right now, when you're young and you're living your life and you're like, I don't care about the kingdom of heaven. 100% your prerogative. Now, maybe when you're on your deathbed, you'll be thinking a little different. And for all I know, you can live your life being a sinner your whole entire life, be getting ready to die and cry out to the Lord, please forgive me of all of my sins and he'll let you in. I cannot condemn you. I cannot judge you. I can only tell you what the word of God says. And that's what it says. So how about about we stop all of this division and we start coming together and let's have conversations rather than arguments let's understand that we are all human beings we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and he wants us all to come in in second Peter it says God is not slow as some consider slowness but rather he is patient as he wishes for none to perish but for all to repent and enter into salvation. He's waiting on you. I'm just trying to put out that branch, that olive branch and say, look, we're getting nowhere by yelling and screaming at each other. Let's come together in love like Jesus would do. In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless, amen.